And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at Pokemon Evolutions. Now, Pokemon is a game that I first got into almost 20 years ago when it first came out. I was already playing other collectible card games, and so I was like, all right, this one sounds interesting. I got it, and I was like, ah, this is not as good as other games. I played it a few times, bought a lot of cards for it, and got rid of them. Yeah, that's right. I pretty much gave away first edition Pokemon stuff. Well, okay. I kind of forgot about Pokemon as the years go by. I, mean, I didn't forget about it. I saw it going, but I was like, oh, kids game, kids game, kids game, kids game. Well, I recently got sucked into the whole Pokemon Go craze. My kids were playing it, so I'm playing it too on the phone. So I have the P Pikachu and all his buddies. I know who they are now. I know about catching Pokemon. Well, so when they asked me if I wanted to review the new game, I thought, hey, why not? Let's go revisit this game. Now, if you are here and you... It's like, who is this guy talking about Pokemon? Well, I review a lot of board games and card games, so I'm going to be looking at it kind of like that. Like, there's a lot of collectible cards in there. I'm not a Pokemon fanatic. I'm not comparing this to previous sets. It's been a long time. I'm just looking at this as a game. Would I go out and buy decks of this? Let's take a look. So there is a rule sheet that if you open it up, it basically sets it up for two players to play. The rule sheet then is unfolded like this. And I know that this is what collectible card games do, but my tolerance for map folded rule sheets is lower. But at least it's pretty easy to uh, see the different rule sheet. You're going to build a deck or use a starter deck that is full of different types of energy cards. And so we have... Uh, there's two decks here. We have a, a deck that features, features Pikachu, and it's going to have electric energy and plant energy in it, and different characters in it. And then we have a deck that features Mewtwo, and this one has the uh, psychic energy and fighting energy in it. Um, so you're going to build a deck, and then players are going to essentially try to beat your opponent. Now, there are three ways to beat your opponent. One is to knock out all their Pokemon. Another is to get your reward cards, or another is to make them so that they can't draw cards from their deck. And so what players are going to do, they're going to be setting up here uh, at the beginning of the game, and they're going to have some cards that are placed over here from their deck in these prize cards. You don't know exactly what these cards are, but you're going to have these cards here, and every time you knock out one of your opponent's Pokemon, you're going to be able to draw one of these cards into your hand. So players are going to draw seven cards, three, four, five, six, seven, into their hand, and they're going to look at the different cards here, and hopefully they've drawn a basic Pokemon. I've drawn two Pokemon. I know these are basic because at the very top over the Pokemon, it says the word basic, and I'm going to pick one, Caterpie and Weedle, uh, two Caterpillars. Uh, I like poison better than... Uh, string paralyzation. So I'd put this one down here as my active Pokemon, and I could put any other basic Pokemon on my bench. So I'll place this guy here. The rest of these cards are going to form my hand, and once that's done, you'll then flip these cards face up so your opponent can see the different cards that you have. You can have the five cards here on the bench. This is your card that you have. Uh, let's see what my opponent is going to pick. Uh, oh, they'll use basic Mewtwo as theirs. Now, what you're doing on your turn is you have many different actions that you can partake on your turn. You can put more basic Pokemon onto your bench. So the first thing you'll do in your turn is you'll draw a card. Um, you can play Pokemon trainer cards, and these will do various things. Like this one says, put two basic energy cards from a discard pile into your hand. This one here says, draw three cards. That sounds like a good idea. Let's get some more cards in our hand. Woo! Energy cards. That was a pretty good one. Heal 60 damage, remove all special conditions from your Pokemon. You are also allowed to attach an energy card to your Pokemon. So you're only allowed to do, this is one of the th only things you're allowed to do once per turn. So I can attach here energy. Now I can attach any energy I want, but you're likely going to want to attach energies that are going to help that Pokemon. This Pokemon here, the Weedle, uh, has for one, if he has one plant energy on him, he can attack his opponent with a Poison Sting, which will do 10 damage. And then flip a coin 
And the starter decks come with some nice helpful coins. And if it's heads, your opponent's active Pokemon is now poisoned. All right, great. So once I'm done with all the different things that I'm going to do, and I can use abilities, sometimes there'll be special abilities that you can use on your Pokemon. I can retreat a Pokemon. To retreat a Pokemon, you have to pay the retreat cost, which here is, that's basically any, any sort of uh, energy. So I could pay one energy to retreat him. I don't want to do that. So once I'm done with my actions, he'll then attack your opponent. So I attack him with Poison Sting. I will do 10 damage. The game comes with a pile of different tokens. These are really, really pathetic bad tokens. Um, so I would replace them. So I do 10 damage. And Mewtwo is now 120 damage to go <laughs> before I take him out. But there's a chance he's poisoned, so we'll flip a coin. Ah, uh, it's Tails. Had it been heads, we would put a poison counter. And every time between turns, uh, Mewtwo would take 10 more damage. So this is a big thing. Now, this is not probably the best thing. I'm not going to want to fight with Weedle for the rest of, uh, rest of the game. However, I'm going to want to put out different characters. I want to basically um, put out, uh, maybe I'll get better basic Pokemon and be able to do them. Here's a, a basic Pokemon, Electro Buzz. He's 70 hit points. And if I get uh, different uh, energy on him, I can flip a coin and paralyze my opponent and do 10 damage. Or Thunder Punch, I can flip a coin. If it's heads, it does 10 more damage. If tails, I do 10 damage to myself. But there's a chance that he's doing 40 damage each time. So you have these opportunities to basically attack and, and, and beat things up. But eventually, I might be able to play something and level him up. So this here is a Stage 1 Pokemon. It says Evolve from a Weedle. So if I have a Weedle out there, I can make him into a Kahuna. Now you'll notice the Kahuna is better. He has more hit points than the Weedle does. He has 80 hit points. He has a special ability you can use to stiffen, which will make you take attacks that are less than 40, don't do damage to you. And he has a poison powder, which is will do 20 damage. And I can flip a coin and a poison my opponent, just like the Weedle's power, except poison powder is a little bit better. You also notice that Pokemon have a weakness, which means if they're attacked on that, they'll take double damage. Well, Kahuna is a much, much better um, Pokemon, but there's also a stage two Pokemon. So here I have a Beedrill, and this, this guy is way better. I could put him on top of this Pokemon. Uh, level two comes from a level one. And then he has Poison Sting, which is 30, and just automatically poisons. I don't have to flip the coin anymore. Or 40 damage times the number of Beedrill you have in play to one of your uh, opponent's Pokemon. And that one's a little bit harder to pull off, but still, just the Poison Sting itself is a pretty nifty thing to have. And you'll find that level two Pokemon are extremely powerful. There is even, uh, this is not in the starter decks, but in the booster things, a level two Pokemon. So here's Nidoking, who's a really powerful level two Pokemon. Then they can have a break thing, which is added to them, which is even more powerful. Basically um, ups their hit points and adds another special ability to that level two Pokemon. Also, it's glossy. So players are going to go back and forth like this. When your Pokemon is killed, your opponent's going to take a reward. Uh, the, or I guess your po Pokemon aren't killed. They just go to your discard pile. And you better be able to bring out another one from your bench because if you can't, then the game is over. And th so there's a lot of different strategies and things that you're going to try playing the trainer cards and upgrading your Pokemon. I was able to get many different booster packs, so I'm just going to be showing you some of the cards here from them. Here's the very famous Pikachu card. He comes in the starter pack. Here's Ponyta, which always makes us happy when we catch them in Pokemon Go. Um... There are cards in here that are uh, foil cards. You can see Magikarp that flops around, but it's foil. And then here's an X. This is a Slowbro X. This evolves from, this is like a Mega. This is another thing that can basically uh, evolve. And this is a pretty powerful card, I guess. I, again, I don't have, so a lot of these cards I wasn't able to, like this one here, the M Venusaur X. This looks like a pretty powerful card, but I don't have the one that it evolves from, so I can't put it in. Uh, there's a Foil Rattata. Man, I hate these guys catching him in Pokemon Go. But you can see a lot of the different Pokemon and trainer cards here. You also get more energy cards, although I was really kind of surprised at the low number of energy cards that are in these booster packs. I think you're going to have to buy starters to get enough because I'm not able to, to build anything. If I want to use these guys, let's say I want to use some of these fire guys that are in here, like the Growlith, I wouldn't put them in a deck because so far I have only one fire energy I would have to buy a lot more packs to get more fire energy or just buy a starter pack that gives it. But I did find this cool double, like, neutral energy card. Anyhow, I'm getting off track here. So on your turn, you will draw a card, do a bunch of actions, and then attack. Then it's the next person's turn. 
eventually one player is going to win from one of the victory conditions. That's kind of how you play Pokemon. So again, I was taking a look basically in this from uh, Pokemon Evolutions here. I had Pikachu Power and Mewtwo Mayhem. And uh, like I said, they sent me a whole lot of other cards and a few of them I switched out in my decks because they fit into my decks. But for the most part, I'm not able to use these unless I have, um, you know, the, the, the power cards to use them. But it looks cool. It looks like it's your typical rare cards, super rare cards, foil cards. I don't care so much about foil cards. They are what they are. But it is kind of interesting. And what's interesting is it looks like this is a very basic Pokemon set. It looks like they went back. Some of these cards, I like, didn't I play with these cards when I first played the game? And that's from what I've read online. This is kind of a retro set going back to the original Pokemon. And also, I mean, I, real, I, I recognize most of these Pokemon from games. Electroid caught him. Drowsy caught too many of them. Rattata, Beedrill. Dragonite, oh, I haven't caught him yet. Okay, Magnemite, oh, I got him. Ponyta, Shantrue, I got him. You know, and I know these people because I caught them in the Pokemon Go games. So there was a little bit of that. But let's talk about the game itself. Okay, so the game itself, I like the cards. They're very, for they're very straightforward. The game itself is kind of intriguing because you start with basic Pokemon and some are better than others. You saw that Mewtwo was way better than my little Weedle that I brought out there. But the fact is, is that the Weedle can grow into a much bigger version. Well, so can... Uh, so can them, the other Pokemon can grow into versions too, but there's some basic Pokemon who do not have bigger versions and they're just out there to kind of hold the fort. But you get a level two Pokemon out there, you can do some pretty big damage. And this game has kind of a ramping up effect because it's like, oh, I bring out a, a, a Pokemon and it's just hitting for a little bit, then it gets bigger. And then pretty soon, huge. And, and pretty soon you, the Pokemon are just knocking each other out right and left. And while I think the game could run out from a deck, usually it's going to run out because someone's knocked out six of their opponent's Pokemon. Your big level two comes out, you throw in one of your little guys, and you're like, well, hold the fort, little basic Pokemon, because you're about to get chewed up. Because that big guy, he's going to be hard to beat. So you want to get those out as quickly as possible and ramp them up so they can take the hit points or throw out something that can like suck up hit points while so you get another level one or two Pokemon ready to put out there. But once you fall behind in this game, it's, it's hard to stay afloat. Now, Pokemon was made for kids, for sure, and in, online I found some very nice tutorials that are made by the Pokemon company uh, showing how to play the game, and I, that was a nice thing. I, I thought they were very good, although for me they were way too basic. It was like, click on the fire energy. Good, you found the fire energy. I felt like I was playing Dora the Explorer. Um, but uh, the rules themselves were not very difficult. It was easy to teach. I taught it to one of my daughters who really likes Pokemon Go, and so... We played back and forth, and this was one of my daughters who is not very much into board games at all, and she was able to understand the back and forth process of this. And I think it's kind of a neat thing. Now, there's a collectible game, which means you got to get a lot of cards, I guess, if you want to be competitive. But these two starter decks were pretty fun. It was fun to play them back and forth. I don't think you need to get a lot of extra cards to play with one another. So, my original impressions of it, I played it a long time ago, I was comparing it to other collectible card games, were not very high. Now that I played it here, I think it's pretty neat. I mean, I, there, there's some... I don't know that I think it's the perfect game. I'm still like a little bit, it's still one of those games where at a certain point you're like, oh, I'm going to lose. And there's not much you can do to come back from that. But games do play pretty quickly. It is a, that fun one-on-one -on -one aspect. And sometimes you're like, get back on the bench. You get out there, you know, take some blows. Game's kind of cruel if you think about it. You're throwing these guys out there to fight each other. But it's easy and simple for kids and yet plays well as an adult. My co-host on the Dice Tower Audio Show, Eric Summer, is always touting how good Pokemon is, and I've always made fun of him, so hopefully he never watches this video. Um, but definitely, definitely this is a much better game than I remembered, and one I think that a lot of people are going to have fun with. If you've never played Pokemon before, this is a good jumping on point. If you've already played Pokemon and you're very heavily into it, then you're just watching this to see what I think about the game, and you already like this expansion anyway. Dice Tower Judgment, gotcha! I mean, approved! <laughs> Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door! Yeah.